brothers and sisters will leave, tell you this. If I say there is like international plan to finish the Muslims, I will not be exaggerated. I live in USA and I know well and everybody there knows well what the plan. Since 1980, they started to show the Muslim, to address the Muslim with different labels. The first label they put at the face of the Muslim, it was fundamentals. Those are fundamentals. And everybody is fundamentals. Muslims are fundamentals. We are all la ilaha illallah, the basic and the, we are all stick on it. And all other religion and all denominations like this. Until this word had no longer had a place in the mind of people. Then they change fundamentals to radicals. Then after radicals change to extremist. Then after extremist, terrorist. And with each word, they were showing TV, movies, a lot of films and a lot of Hollywood's heroes showing the people the hateful picture about terrorists. Then they put the Muslims in exact picture. They are that the ones who we should fight. So those who made 911 with the help of the government of USA, as you know well, they made it. They expect after 911, all Muslims in the States will collect their baggage and leave the country. That's what they expect. But they were surprised by the power of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam supported by Allah the Almighty Azza wa Jal that those who accepted Islam in one year after September 11 are equal to 20 years before can you imagine this say takbir takbir so Allah the Almighty Azza wa Jal protect this Islam because it is the truth and no one can deny it. No one can deny the clear water. But when the Muslims show the non-Muslim or the others, Islam is nothing but a violent and fighting with each other about Mawlid al-Nabi, Yom al-Nabi, Salam al-Nabi. Subhanallah, that really will cause harm to Muslims and cause others to find a way how to divide the Muslims. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallu an nabi. Example, his example for us was clear. He dealt with Muslim totally different than how we deal right now. Anyone who say la ilaha illallah, the time of Rasulullah, Rasulullah give him the freedom to do whatever he like. As long as there is la ilaha illallah, that person is survived. And will go forward. A story happened that Rasulullah assigned a Muslim brother to lead the Salah in somewhere, in like a village. Then that person invented a new matter. After he recited the Fatiha in Salah, he recited Qul Wallahu Ahad. Then he read whatever he likes from the Quran. That's what he did. People complain to Rasulullah. They said, Ya Rasulullah, this guy recite Qul Wallahu Ahad every time after Fatiha. Rasulullah so said to him, Why you recite Qul Wallahu Ahad after Fatiha? He said, I love it. Rasulullah says to him, Allah loves you because of that. And this indicates you may have some things when the people don't know the Quran, tell them these surahs or the other. And a lot of people doesn't know Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam among our fellows Muslim and none. So we have to deal like Rasulullah dealt. One day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam make a lot of dua and a long dua. It was salah and Mu'az as well took over and make a lot of dua like Mawlid al-Nabi right now. Then a Badawin, those who are not educated, he came to Rasulullah and said, Ya Rasulullah, Wallahi, I don't understand anything of your dandana and the dandana of Mu'az. You know the word dandana, right? Dandana, 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 mean music. 
mean a tone, means something is not a human talk. And he said to Rasulullah, I don't understand your music or tone or dandana, and neither the dandana of Mu'az. <laughs> Imagine somebody say that to our Imam here. You go out of the masjid and learn and come back. <laughs> if you go out of the masjid, how we will learn? <laughs> it should be in. And this, the much critical the person is, the much care we should spend for him. So that person said to Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, I really don't understand any of your dandana, neither the music or tongue of Mu'az. Rasulullah sallallahu said to him, and what is your dandana? What is your music? What are you doing? He said, I said, oh Allah, protect me from hell and admit me into Jannah. Rasulullah said, my dandana and the dandana of Mu'az is the same. To go to his level, to speak with the level of people, to speak like this, other story, I didn't like to make it long in front of uh, our president, but like uh, he pushed me and he said he likes, all right, bismillah. <laughs> Rasulullah sallallahu how he dealt with his fellow Muslim. One day a Sahabi named Khawat. Khawat, he was not good Sahabi. He was not among the righteous, very righteous one, like me. Like most of us, you know, he was crooked a little bit. So they have a booties of war, spoils. Rasulullah assigned somebody to take care of the slaves, girls, and booties. And he assigned Khawad to take care of animals because he know him is Bedouins and so. Khawad, that companion, as we said, he was not that good. He left his mission and he went the tent and he went to the tent when the girls are. The girls were non-Muslim and you know well what it means. It was a hole on that tent. He was looking at them. They were laying down, you know. Rasulullah was passing by. It was very fortunate that Rasulullah passing by behind him. And he saw him. Rasulullah asked him, hey, hey, Khawat. What are you doing? He looked behind. Rasulullah caught him red-handed. What he want to say? Rasulullah assigned him to take care of camels and lambs and sheep. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I lost one camel. I'm looking for it. <laughs> the camel inside the tent. And <laughs> his sinners lied and wrongdoing. Nope. Rasulullah, take it easy. Wallah, we are trying to say the story, not to laugh, to learn the style from Rasulullah. And he said to him, Khawat, when you find your camel, inform me. Tell me. He left him. Left him. Go. Next day, two days, Rasulullah was in the aisles of Medina in the street, and Khawat was coming in the opposite direction. Salam alaikum as -salam. He said, hey Khawat, did you find your camel? He said, yeah, no, no, Ya Rasulullah, I did not find the camel. He said, when you find it, tell me. That's like, uh, he was lying. He has to turn to Allah. He has. After a few days, he was sitting in the masjid. And Rasulullah entered the masjid. When Khawat saw Rasulullah, he immediately stood up. Allahu Akbar. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Why? Because he doesn't want Rasulullah to talk to him. <laughs> Rasulullah noticed that, and he sat behind him. Khawat started to make salah longer <laughs> and longer. <laughs> Rasulullah told him, Khawat, make your salah as long as you like. I'm here until morning. <laughs> So Khawat hastened his salah and finished. Then Rasulullah asked him, did you find your camel? He said, Ya 